Chris? Oh, okay. All right. I'm all for it. Okay. That is metal. But well, what's it made out of? Molten rocks. It's rocks that have been melted down. Old crust that's been destroyed. And basically, we classify the magma based on the amount of silica. And we're going to model this in our next unit. But when we look at how we classify magma, it's based on the amount of silica. Remember, that's that SiO4. Think about a bunch of quartz. So it's a bunch of this stuff right here. It's light, clear stuff. <laughs> now silica, you guys ever seen anybody blow glass before? You yeah. know, Or at least seen a video of it? Okay. It's very thick, right? Very, the next one we're talking about here is very viscous. And that's because all glass is is this pure silica, SiL4. And when silica gets melted down, it gets really, really gooey. And if we have a whole bunch of silica on the magma, it prevents the magma from being able to flow. It's like having molasses instead of syrup. There's no Yes. And it's very similar to the dark caro syrup, right? So, you know, you think about going and you get your Betty Crocker, not your Betty Crocker. And, and, and Jemima, wow, that was bad. All right, so you got your Aunt Jemima on, like, pancake syrup, which is still somewhat thick, but it still flows pretty easily. That's what we would call um, mafic magma. So you have mafic, which is kind of a low grade on the silica. But on the high end of that is something called felsic. And your calcium has high levels of silica, which really prevents it from being able to flow. And so this leads into our next two terms to talk about magma, viscous, and viscosity. What is what is viscous? When we say something really viscous, what is it, what are we really saying? What does it mean to be viscous? You guys heard that term before? Put it in a sentence. Um, molasses. As I was trying to clean up the molasses at annoying molasses, it was so viscous, I had a very difficult time. Thick. thick. There we go. All right. So it's thick. It basically resists flow. And so when we say something's viscous, it means that it basically resists flow. It doesn't like to move. It's so thick. It's a liquid, but yet it doesn't actually flow anywhere. It's just a really super thick, gooey mess. That's viscous. So you guys remember the um, Dr. Seuss story of Oobla? Never. What? Are you serious? Oh, that's right. I forgot. This is a generation that doesn't read anything. Okay, got it. Um, <laughs> So true. I forgot. That's right. You guys read the new stuff. You don't read any of the great classics that the rest They're of the world is going to read. Who just said I'm old? I wish I was. The only thing I was going to say. I got older. Alright. So, anyways, there was a good waste of an analogy. So, what did the like? Alright. So, viscous means to resist flow. The viscosity. So this is more, we think about viscous, that's more your adjective, for those of you guys who like English class. Mm -hmm. So that's your adjective. The viscosity of an object is its noun, it's a property. So when we talk about viscosity, it's the level to which it resists flow. So when I tell you that felsic magma has high viscosity, it means that it really doesn't like to flow at all. And we talk about the fact that ultramafic magma 
has very low viscosity, it means that it flows pretty easily. Two perfect examples I give you guys for volcanoes with these types of magma is your felsic magma is like Mount Vesuvius. We all have heard stories about how well that has turned out. Never heard of it. Are you guys kidding? No, I don't know what that is. No, I'm not kidding. Okay, well, here's the solution. Go look it up. All right, now. <laughs> when we think about mapping, or even ultra mapping, that's like um, Mauna Loa. Okay? Which is where? Hawaii, right? You guys ever watched the Hawaiian Islands as they erupt? See. When was it the lava? Somewhat. What was it? Okay, think about it. As it erupts, that lava is just simply running down the slopes right onto the ocean edge, right? right. Okay. That's the type of magma that has such a low viscosity, it's able to flow down the hill. When we think about places like Mount Vesuvius, which is Pompeii, Italy, people oh, like Italy, Chris Wise. Yeah. That's a map. I've never heard of Vesuvius. Okay, that's a perfect example of felsic where it's so thick that they can't flow. And literally, it's a lot like Mount St. Helens as well, where it literally blows its top. Because you have so much pressure built up from underneath. The total of volcanoes to explode. And so when we think about magma, there are four things that actually affect the explosion of magma, and that's these things here. It's not something we need to spend a lot of time on, but these are the four main uh, factors that talk about how our magma is created. So where I talk about temperature, Pressure. The higher the temperature, the more the pressure. Very directly proportional. Water content. Now, this is interesting. How does water content affect magma? Let me ask you this Does it lower or raise the melting temperature? Okay, let me ask you this. By putting water into the magma, would it make it easier to melt something or more difficult to melt something? Harder. Okay, guys, let's say that. How many guys say more difficult? Okay. Why do you say that, Cole? Because you're cooling it down that you melt. All right. How many guys say it makes it easier to melt? Okay, guys. Come on, there's a whole bunch more of you guys that said, yeah, it makes me easier. I think oh. it would depend. Okay. Why would you say easier, Dave? Well, I don't want to be sure. Don't be afraid to be wrong. Well, what's the right answer? I get yelled at. Come on. You can do a lot of that. Huh? Okay. Okay. All right, well, here's what it does. It does make it easier to mouse something. Actually, it lowers the melting temperature of all the minerals inside the magma. And what it is, is the steam, if you want to kind of think of it that way, that steam that's created from the water kind of makes it easier to melt the minerals that are near that water content. So by having a lot of water in our magma, it really helps to break down the minerals. And then we have this last one up here, the mineral composition. And that's like the amount of silica that's in there. So what type of minerals do we have inside the magma? So that really should be a silica content. It's kind of one important one there. 